Hey everyone, I'm Noah Miller with the Opposition Party. I do a lot of 3D animation, uh, some commercial directing, some writing, all this other stuff. Uh, but we're here today primarily to talk about uh, the basics, sort of the 101 of 3D animation. Um, we're going to cover a few different types of, of interfaces. We're going to cover uh, animation types. We're going to cover uh, rendering and lighting, and we're going to cover materials. Um, primarily, I'm going to be showing you these examples using Cinema 40, but uh, it's worth remembering that uh, most of the principles we're going to teach here are software agnostic, meaning they're available to uh, anyone, and they work in all different softwares. Those are the basic underpinnings of how this works. Uh, it's, it's worth thinking of it as like a language. We're all speaking the same language. We're all speaking English in this case. But each one of the different softwares has a slightly different dialect. But the words all mean generally the same thing. The way they're spoken, cadence, how sentences are constructed are usually about the same thing. Same thing applies here in uh, 3D animation. Uh, all of these principles are the exact same no matter what piece of software you're trying to learn or working in at the time. And will you know really help you to jump between multiple pieces of software because so some software does things better than others. Uh, for example, Cinema 4D is really great with motion graphics, but Maya is really great with uh, sort of animation and stuff. Like if you're animating humans moving around, it's very great for that. While something like Houdini is extremely great with uh, large scale simulations, like a house collapsing or a flood or something like that. Uh, however, all of these individual softwares can do all of these different things, and they all do it in kind of the same way. Uh, so knowing your basics, your 101, which is what we're going to cover here, applies across the board to everything. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over is the different uh, layouts of your particular piece of uh, software. This is Cinema 4D. It has inside of it a viewport. That's what this is here. If you can see this uh, big open space, this is where all your work happens. Inside the viewport right now, I've got a cube. It's just a primitive shape that can be changed in size and shape and all of that. Nothing big. It's where everything will live um, when you're animating. Uh, we also have over here a objects panel. This is a panel that has all of the different objects within it that exist within the scene. So there is the cube. You can see it light up. There is a camera. I'm currently uh, in the space of the camera, but if we Pull back just a little bit. There you can see there's the camera. That is what we will be rendering out. It's in the shape of a little camera with a little handle and everything. It's easy to understand. Uh, and then there are lights. This is a light. It's tur currently turned off because if we turn it on, it lights the scene, but it is right there. It's not really doing much. Um, this is a inside of the the um, inside of the viewport. You'll you'll notice it doesn't really look like anything special for a couple different reasons. One, it is purposefully set up as a uh, simplistic example of what your scene will look like. This isn't what it looks like when it's rendered. Rendered is when you take your animation that you've made and you make it pretty. It's the best way to talk about that. Uh, it is not in pretty vo mode right now. It is in uh, gray box mode right now where everything is just simple and easy to understand. This is done primarily because as you build out your scenes, they become bigger and bigger in terms of size and in terms of how much space they take up within the file itself. If they get too big and you're rendering them out like live, uh, your system slows down. So you want it to be simple and fast for the system to work with. It requires a little bit of imagination on your part to go, oh, I know that the this cube will look like, I don't know, a piece of concrete or something like that. Um, we'll get into that with rendering and lighting and all of that. But no, for right now, this is definitely not what your final looks like. It is just a simple representation so you can work really quickly and move things around in generally real time. So you move it this way and the system isn't slowing down. In fact, it's going so fast that you're getting motion blur on something that generally doesn't have that. Cool. Uh, just to give you an example of how this is uh, used throughout the... Um, other pieces of software. We have Blender here. Same thing, has a viewport. Put a cube there. There actually is usually a cube default, but I don't have a default cube set up in mine, so I put a cube in. Doesn't matter to you, just uh, the way that 
Blender is set up, same thing. There's a camera. We're currently in the camera view like we were before. There's a light. It, all of this exists in a, an object manager here. Um, I believe it calls it the yeah, scene collection in Blender. Uh, they also have, just like exists in Cinema, and we'll go back to Cinema in a second, uh, attributes down here. So I go to the cube, and I can change its location. I can change how it's rotated. I can change how big it is. And a whole bunch of other stuff. You see all these? It's all the stuff that you can do to it, which is great. And there is a timeline so that if you change things over time, which is the primary concept of animation, things changing over time, uh, you can do that. This is very much the same as if you are familiar with uh, Premiere or DaVinci or Avid or whatever. Same thing. It's an editor. And it works off of keyframes the same way that uh, animating a mask in Premiere might do. And I assume that you're somewhat familiar with that uh, since you're here on, on Tongle's site uh, looking at this, but in general, it operates uh, with the same principles as a, uh, the timeline at least, as a nonlinear uh, editing software, which is relatively simple as well. So looks complicated, really isn't. I'm gonna take a look at one more example of an interface. This is Unreal. Uh, Unreal is, um, pretty much the exact same, except you don't use it uh, for modeling. You usually end up doing your modeling in Blender or Maya, and then you bring all of that into Unreal here. Um, you'll see, again, we have what they call an outliner. It's just like the object manager uh, in Cinema 40. It's where all of the things inside the scene are stored that exist within this uh, viewport. And then you have your attributes here where you can change those things. Um, and there is, again, a camera. This is the camera we would be looking for. It's a little bit more realistic of a camera than that silly one from cinema. Uh, there is a light within here. And then there's a few other things that pertain specifically to real-time rendering, which we're not really going to cover. I'll hit them briefly in the rendering section. But real-time just means it happens in real-time. And what you see in the viewport is 98 99% of what you'll see in your final, uh, in your final piece, of, uh, piece of animation. One of the things to think about, and the reason why I'm including Unreal is because it's so you know popular right now, especially with the new uh, five point, or we at five point one, five point two, we're pretty far along um, version of this, is uh, that you primarily do all of your work outside of Unreal and then bring everything into Unreal to be done. Uh, you can think of Unreal as its own like separate renderer, and that's that's for animation. If you're doing game design, you're going to live here as well. But oh, your characters and your uh, scenes are primarily going to be made outside and brought in. Uh, some of that's changing as the technology gets better, but right now that's generally, I'm speaking in vast generalities here, uh, how it goes. All right. Uh, going back to cinema really quickly. Um, i trying to think of other things you might need to know in here. Here's their timeline. Here's this. I think that, that pretty much covers it. Um, the reason why I think it's really useful for you to think of um, the the more general aspects of a, a piece of software and how they're all kind of the same is because the uh, the look of them changes quite often. I'll, I'll probably bop in some examples, but like this is what Blender used to look like. This is what Cinema used to look like. This is what Unreal used to look like. They change, and they change quite often. They refresh their look and they become you know, just a little bit different. They're, they're um, going back to the original example, their accent changes. And so it's better to know the principles rather than to get locked into... That's my dog. That's my dog. That's my dog. Okay, I don't, I don't remember where I was. Um, but in general, learn the general principles of this. Um, the the look and feel of all these pieces of software will change. Don't get locked into one. So it's a good idea to learn the principles before you get started. Um, I did, like I got locked into cinema for a long time before I learned to do other stuff. Um, and it became really hard because like I learned, uh, let's see if I can stress this metaphor a little more. I learned uh, to speak a very specific dialect of English. And when I went to the South, I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. Um, but you want to be able to speak to everybody. Yeah.